Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Ooh, shit. How are you? How's your week going? Oh, that's fantastic. I had, oh my God, I'm going to sneeze. I mean, this is one of those ones where you just got to sit there and stare at something with your eyes squinted, you know, blinking sort of in an odd way. And then it goes away. Whenever you announce, oh my God, I have to sneeze, you never do unless the sun is there and you can turn around and just stare down that demon. You know, there's a new theory out there that, you know, for all these years, all these people praying to the sun god, that that the sun god is actually the devil hiding in plain sight. You know, like every time they catch a serial killer, they're always like hiding in plain sight. Like where, 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 where are the other ones? Are they off the grid? (laughs) They're all hiding in plain sight. They're in society. They are amongst us. Would he come down from the fucking mountains like Bigfoot? Hey, man, can you uh, give me a blowjob? Right? Sort of an Elvis vibe. That's one for the money, two for the show. Sticky in the trunk and here we go. Sorry. Um, Anyway... Yeah, that's always great. I've read something recently that the sun is not the sun. It's actually Satan. Right? (laughs) You guys know I'm full of shit when I go, right? And the world is flat. And uh, he's he's, going to cook us. That's what he's been trying to do all these years. So for all these years, he's been getting into these CEOs' heads. And just like, yeah, man, keep doing that. Tear down that mountain. Get the stuff that's in it. The results of this, by the time it happens, you'll be dead. Don't worry about it. That's for the next generation to deal with. And now it's time to pay the tolls. Blame the people that used your products after you, that were playing the game that you set up. Um, No, I didn't read anything that the sun was actually Satan. I had nothing to do with it. I tell you what is Satan. Let's talk about Satan this week. First of all, Satanists, from what I learned a long time ago, don't believe in the devil. They just believe in, you know, doing what feels good for themselves, which means not watching their children and doing blow three times a week. Uh, sorry, had to hit pause. The kid was screaming and yelling in the background. You ever take a vacation and you don't feel rested at all? If that's the case, you're a dad. Um, (laughs) Oh, I was going to tell you what's been dry. Like, um, there's this style of video. I think I've talked about it before. I alluded to it. You know what I mean? What do people people call that? Uh, When there's a, um, there's a little Easter eggs, little Easter eggs in movies. If you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, you don't. It's just a little Easter egg, you know? These little cool things in movies are only for Christians. Um, are we the only ones that believe in Easter? Bill, could you be any more all over the map? I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. My son, for whatever reason, likes to get up at two or three in the morning and just come walking in our room. And then I got to put him to bed. And then he wants me, he, he won't sleep in his little boy bed. He sleeps in the guest room bed. And then he wants me to get in there, and then he just fucking crawls all over me, kicking 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 me for about fucking three hours. And then what's funny is right as the sun goes up, he fucking passes out. And I look at him, and it looks like he's been unloading, like working like UPS or something. Like he just got back from his shift. Like that's how hard he's sleeping. So, little sleep deprived, little deprived, not deprived. Deprived. Um, anyway, the style of video that's been driving me nuts is those videos where somebody's going to do something and it's just a bunch of quick edits with the sound of what they're doing. Like if they were going to like, you know, like make some scrambled eggs, there'd be the sound of the bowl hitting the counter. Tink. Crack the egg into the bowl. 
turn the stove on. Skillet, clink on, butter in. And you pour the thing in. And... Oh, who the fuck finds that entertaining? I watched this guy the other day. He had a car that I liked. And I wanted to see a video of the car. So what the fuck did they do? First shot, close up of the key going into the door. Shh. Then he turns it. And then, I, then they cut to his thumb, pressing on the button. And then the door opening. And then him sitting there. Just show the fucking car. Jesus fucking Christ. Can you imagine if life was actually like that? Like sounds were that fucking intense? Or at least um, showcased? If every time I wanted some scrambled, who doesn't like scrambled eggs, right? If every time I had scrambled eggs, I had to endure that fucking process. I, w- I, would, I don't know what I would do. What else could you have? You know what? I'll have an apple. Then all I have to do is just watch you reach over, grab it, and then fucking hand it to me. No, they'd wash it. This is one of my favorite things, how somebody made a video like that. Somebody's like, oh, my God, that's cool. I'm going to shoot something in that, in that style. And then everybody on fucking Instagram is like, we're all going to do it, too. And you know what's great? Is it at no point will it become annoying and unoriginal. Just keep doing it. Oh, I am fucking wired. I can't wait. I'm going to the gym today. Old Billy Boy's going to the gym. The testosterone's going down, but the weights are going up. Yeah, I'm at that age. I, I'm just losing muscle mass, you know? So what I got to do is what every guy does at my age. You either accept the fact that you're mortal or you do steroids. <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> you know what's funny is I think there's so many people on roids and HGH and testosterone pills. You know what's going to become extinct is the, the you, know, you know, the little old lady, the little old man, the cute little fucking, you know. Just going up, oh, and what do you do? Oh, that's lovely. Would you like to play some cards? Oh, that would be fantastic, right? That's all going to go away. It's just going to be some fucking 80-year-old guy pulling over. You, you, want some of this? you want some of this smoke? I fucking see that one. He didn't want that smoke. He wanted all of that smoke. The smoke was there and he partook. How many ways can you dissect that fucking joke? Let's talk about Instagram hack. Here's another one. Why don't somebody else graph an incident with fuck around versus find out? It's still funny. It's still funny the 490th time a fucking video does that. I haven't said that. I was actually talking to Nia the other night how unbelievably fucking funny it seems the average person is um, on Instagram. Like, I'm a comedian. Like, well, actually, you know what? I'm kind of one of those comedians. I do laugh a lot. I don't have like that. I don't do that. Like, look at something, you know, somebody fucking falls on their ass. And as he goes down, he grabs some fat woman's dress and rips it, you know, and I just don't look at it and be like, that's funny. You know what I mean? Like, I laugh my ass off. I love slapstick. Okay. I'm stupid. I'm not a smart person. So people falling down, hurting themselves, you know, not injured, but just like, ah, you know, Peter Griffin kind of ah is fucking hilarious to me. But anyway, last night I was going through, um, I kind of got away from reading. I brought a book on fucking um, my vacation because I was just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be like a 35-year-old woman who just got out of a relationship. I'm going to stick my toes in the sand. I'm going to read a... I'm going to read a book about, you know, the murder of Indians that we stuck on land that we didn't think was worth anything that is now worth oil... that there was a bunch of oil on it. That's a good summertime read, Right. And um, my kids were just, I don't they just wore me out every day. We like swam every single day, which was fucking awesome. But um, I have found that that's a myth. Like we're going to do this, we'll do that. We're going to wear the kids out. No, you're not. You're going to wear yourself out. And then you're going to have two kids with like, they're like self-charging batteries. You know, like the more that they do, that the, the, it like just stays charged. So 
last night, I did exactly what I said I was going to do, is I was just on my phone watching Instagram videos. And of course, now I can't remember any of them because they were all like 40 seconds long. But um, oh, what was that one that I saw? I was fucking dying. There was someone saying what it's like to have a three-year-old. And she was like cooking something. And then they just cut over and somebody had like a baby, like a picture of a baby and you know they do that thing like remember how Conan O'Brien used to do the mouths on that bit where they were just like you know you do like Bill Clinton and all of that they did that with the baby and they were singing uh, what was that fucking song? I'm butchering the whole thing they were singing a Sam Smith song and the, and the baby threw the F word in it something about him coming into your fucking house and it was so stupid and so random but I thought it was like brilliant. I'm like, how the fuck did they come up with that? So you know something? Actually, I'm going to quit bitching about hacky com- comedy on Instagram because it's kind of like stand-up comedy. You know what I mean? There's a handful of really good comics and then there's some on their way to being it and then there's, and there's, and there's the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Instagram just like the industry that I'm in? I'm hearing rumors that the strike's going to be over soon. We'll see. Oh, by the way, you know, I do that Thursday podcast with Verzi, but the new Zoom agreement is that they fucking own all the content that you record on it. They own the content, right? And then they got some side deal, evidently, with some AI company because they're just, for each person, like, it's so fucking nuts. For each person, not even anybody, like, you know, in the public eye, each person, they're going to, like, create a file and see how you work. You know, how your brain works and way, the way you think and all of this type of shit. Like, these people are going to f- phase all of us. This is it right here. The robot replacements are coming. And I got to tell you, I'm all for it. You think I give a... F- you think I still want to do the fucking road? I'll have Gallagher 2 out there doing my fucking act. I don't give a shit. Let some other cunt take all the money. I don't give a fuck. All right? Hey, I loved your show down in Anaheim. That wasn't me. That was AI me. I was sitting on the porch fucking watching John Bonham videos. I I started a garden in my backyard. (laughs) I'm growing my own vegetables. I'll do it in a second because the entertaining thing is going to be is, um, you know, there's some stupid clip going around where this guy is just just stroking the balls of capitalism. And it was like from like 40 years ago. And he's talking about, you have to have a free market. You got to have a free market. This is the best fucking thing. And it's, everybody's like, this guy, like, this is like Nostradamus. Acting like capitalism is working. Acting like there is a free market. There isn't. You're getting bullied by Robert Barron's since the 1800s. And they've slowly been swallowing up everything, getting rid of the fucking middle class. But, you know, we still got the songs. God bless them. You know, I just my God given right to say fuck you, bitch, with an AR 15 and fucking transition to being something. You know, all this fucking shit we're screaming and yelling about. It. And meanwhile, these cunts are taking all the money. So, what I'm enjoying is that once they destroy everyone below the line, you know, below the line, which is anybody that doesn't meet under fuck fuck mountain every year at the Bilderberg group. Once they destroy all of us and replace all of us, you know, I'm sure that that's like their end game. All right. That is it. We finally have what we want. A bunch of slaves who will do whatever we can. We don't have to pay them and they will never revolt. They'll just do what we want. And then what's going to happen is like the disease of capitalism is you're never happy with what you have. You just want more and more and more, at least the way it's set up. Every quarter, we must increase the profits or else it's considered a failure. We don't care who we have to crush, right? Eventually, that's going to turn on them. And that's when it's going to get fun. You know, when AI me comes in. You know, because I've been told to, and I go in and I snap the neck, the the virtual me 
goes in and snaps the neck of whoever's running all these fucking banks. <laughs> and then it's going to get all the way down to one fucking person. It's going to be him because you know it's going to be him. You know, according to the Bible, it wasn't him. It was him who made all the stuff and then did this other stuff too. Um, it's going to be him and all the AI people and then it's going to be it. And he's going to own all the stadiums. He's going to own all the food. He's going to own all the water, all the land, all the ocean. All the f He's going to own all of it. He's going to go over and he's going to sit down and his lazy boy and he's going to go, ah. that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of the human race. The last person sitting down in a lazy boy with a stuck handle and an exhale. That, that's my prediction. All right. And if you graph it on the fuck around and find out chart, um, I just, you know, what's, um, that's what I wish was, was done more. Because hack comedians, we call each other out all the time. Um, I ever tell you that back in the day uh, at the cellar, all those knuckleheads down there, they started this thing called hack court. And if somebody challenged your joke, you had to take your joke to hack court in front of a jury of your peers and you had, you had to defend your joke. And the other comedian had said why it was hacky, why it was unoriginal and what they hated about your joke. And then you had to stand there <clears throat> and you had to defend it. And even if you won, even if you won, you could never fucking do it again at the cellar because they were so in your fuck. After you defended a joke for the better part of an hour. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know what I wish I did back in the day? I just said, listen, I'm not going to defend my, any of my act. I just want to throw myself on the mercy of this court. And then they would have laughed and then I would have trashed all of them for being hacks. I used to get in. I used to make fun of Patrice for going on stage and pretending that he that he that he reads. I remember he had this stupid fucking joke. Used to drive me nuts. He'd be like, "In America, they got capitalism, but in Russia, that shit is just like." And then he would just shrug his shoulders, like, "What the fuck?" And everyone would go nuts laughing and all that type of stuff. And I used to tease him. I'd go, "You're tricking all these white people into thinking that you're reading." Like, wow, that big black guy. He knows about. You know, he knows about different forms of government. He was talking, that's right, he was talking about four uh, different countries. I'm like, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He just brought him up. That's all that happened there. <laughs> One of the few times I got him. Um, I think my record against him was like one in 36,000. No, no, no. I beat him another time too. I beat him another time too. And I beat him so bad he actually got mad. Um, anyway, plowing ahead. What did I want to talk about? Um, well, I know. I didn't bring this up. So back when I was down Martha's Vineyard, this buddy of mine I did a movie with, goes by the name of Joe McIntyre, is in a group called New Kids on the Block, was doing a solo tour, is doing a solo tour, and he was at the Cape Cod Melody Tent. And, um... I ran into him over the summer or, or earlier this year. And he said, hey, are you, you know, any chance you're going to be back east? He goes, I would love for you to come on and do a few minutes on that show. And I was like, dude, I would love to. So it turns out when he was there, I was at Martha's Vineyard. So we came over for the night. And uh, that's one of my favorite venues. Because it's it's deceivingly large. I forget what it holds, but when you because it's in the round, you it feels like three hundred people, and it's more like you know three thousand people. I don't know what the hell it is. Um, right now, somebody's going to Wikipedia, and they'll they'll send me the exact number. Oh, maybe you should go fucking beard Um. So anyway, I go there, and I show up, and lo and behold, who else is there? Donnie Wahlberg, right? Who's going to be like a surprise guest? And I'm not going to lie to you, the whole time I'm going over there, I'm thinking about the new kid's crowd and, I'm, and my stand-up. I'm like, I don't see a point where this is going to intersect. Like, 
Um, and I kind of told Nia as we were going over, I go, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. Like, I'm kind of fucking nervous about this. And she's like, don't call me dude. And I'm like, sorry, when I get nervous, I just talk to you like you're one of my guy friends. And she's like, well, I don't appreciate that. And I was like, really? None of that happened. It all happened in my head. I just said, I'm nervous about this shit, right? So I went over there. Um, I think I had met Donnie briefly like 10 years ago in the North End. I want to say Joe brought me out. He went to go meet him for lunch or something like that. I met him briefly, but this is the first time I actually met him. Great fucking guy. Um, got to shoot the shit with him and I got to watch the crowd, you know, go nuts when he went up on stage. But before they brought him up on stage, oh, and he was super nice to my wife. It was just, they, both of them, just couldn't have been nicer. And then the crew of people that they hung around with, like the vibe was great. You could just see, this is like 30 years of being on the road. Everybody gets along. Everybody has their quirks and everybody's busting balls. It was just fucking awesome. Uh, and it was so chill that I kind of forgot that I had to go on. So the show starts. Fucking Joey Mac goes down there. These chicks are fucking screaming. It's like Beatlemania. <laughs> I'd never been to something like that, all right? I grew up, and the shows I went to, I don't know if the chicks were screaming. The fucking guitars were so goddamn loud. That's why my ears fucking ring forever. You didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what they were saying. You know, it was just like, it was so fucking loud. It was actually really stupid. How the Like, the level of loud that the show was was so stupid, but that was back... When it was like, if it's too loud, you're too old, man. Um, dumb shit like that. And people didn't understand that from the first note that they were giving everybody permanent um, hearing damage, which is true. Anything 120 decibels, you get up to that level, it's immediate, permanent. You might not notice it, um, but there's some degree of, of uh, permanent damage. So anyway, yeah, I never heard women scream. So they're fucking screaming and I'm just sitting there. I'm like freaking out. So I was saying to Donnie, oh, dude, I gotta be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do out there. He's like, ah, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine, you know? And in my head, I'm going, he's just saying that. He's being a good guy and he's just saying that. I'm not going to be fine. Like so much of my shit is misogynistic and that fucking sounds, that crowd sounds like, there's not one guy in it. So anyways, as I'm sitting back there, I'm freaking out, you know? Who sends me a text message before I go out to reassure me, huh? To let me know, you know, this is why I love her. I'm backstage. She knew I was backstage freaking out, you know, because I didn't want to go out there and bomb and then say something fucked up and get into it with someone in the crowd. Then I'm fucking up somebody else should show. So I'm really nervous. So, and my wife knew it. So she reached out and this is the, this is the text she sent me. It's a tent full of women that love Joey, BB. Don't piss them off. They're really happy. <laughs> and then she's with two crying emojis after it, like laughing, crying. And um, I was just like, all right, what am I going to do? And at the last thing, as I was walking down there to go on, I was like, well, I'm in Martha's Vineyard. I'll just make fun of the fat fucks down there eating ice cream. That's what I'll start off with, you know, even though there's some fat people in the crowd the fact that I'm not talking about them on the mainland, I'm talking about them in Martha's Vineyard, I think I'll get away with it. So I went up there. There's actually a clip. It was weird. I got on stage and I was immediately comfortable. Um, I don't know why. Probably because Joe has such a fucking cool vibe. And uh, I messed around. What did I say? I can't even remember what I said. I was talking about, I was making fun of Joe because he had to go change outfits like Cher or something like that. And um, so I go into my act and I just, not even my act, just riff and I start making fun of fat fucks eating ice cream on Martha's Vineyard and they just went with it. 
And for like, I only did like, you know, seven minutes. I think I was supposed to do like 10, but Joe came back quickly, thank God. And um, I could not have had a better, I had such a good time. Then he came on stage and we were joking around and he was like trying to say something nice to me. And of course I cut him off. And he was like going like, dude, you cannot accept a compliment. And people were kind of laughing, watching us go back and forth. And yada, yada, yada. I got off stage and uh, I had a high like I fucking did an hour. I was so fucking relieved that I didn't bomb. I always think of myself first. And then secondly, that I didn't mess up any of, you know, Joe's evening or anything like that. And then I went around, you know, I walked around the tent. I went around back and I ran into Nia and she had a big grin on her face. She was like, that was great. That was great. I was like, I know. I go, I didn't piss them off. She goes, you didn't. They loved you. I was like, all right, great. (laughs) And we both started laughing. And then we we sat in the crowd. We watched the rest of the show. And uh, and then I had that whole excitement thing because I was like, these fucking people don't know that Donnie's going to come out and they're all going to lose their shit. And that's what they did. I had my earplugs in. Not because of how loud the show was, because of how loud that they were screaming. So they put on a great show. And um, I don't know. It was really cool. It was like watching you know, two comics that had known each other for a long time. Like, their vibe and their chemistry on stage is really cool. So, um, got to do that. Got to see that show. Got to meet all those cool people. So, thank you to Joey McIntyre um, and all of those guys, Donnie and all of them, for letting me hang out. Um, that was really cool. Not to mention, my wife is a huge New, new Kids fan. She was, like, right in their wheelhouse. When did they come out? like the early 90s. So my wife would have been like 13, 14. So that, that was just over. Um, so that was really fun. I, would, I will tell you the boat ride across was scary. Um, the seas were a little rough. I, you, can't, you can't believe what a fucking boat can take. This thing was like going slap, slap, slap on the thing. I'm like, one of these things is just going to make this fucking thing fall apart. By the way, I watched a video on uh, the internet that I don't even know why I watched it. I know why, because I'm so afraid of sharks. You know, and I got a gig coming up in Greece and I love the Mediterranean Sea and people always say, you don't have to worry about sharks. So then I Google shark attacks in the Mediterranean and I quickly find out you do have to worry about sharks. Not like ridiculously worry about them, but they are, it, you are, you're on the menu, dude. I'll tell you that right now. That is my shit. If you're not jumping in a fucking pool, you are on the menu. And if you jump in a pool in Florida, you're on the fucking menu. Because you have no idea what exotic pet your fucking neighbor has that somehow got free and is now fucking chilling with just its eyes above the surface of the water. And as you go in to do a a fucking cannonball or a can opener, that's the one I never understood, the can opener, which was the cannonball except one leg was straight. It was really boring. Sort of like the Camaro rally sport, you know? Band-Aid color with the fucking V6. Then you'd pull up next to a Z28. And you just, you didn't feel like a fucking man. Um, anyway, let me, um, let me, uh, let me, be take me. I was looking up shit about the Eagles today. Oh, Eagles, not the Eagles, Eagles. They're doing their final, they're doing their farewell tour. I don't know why. Oh, I know why, because I was on Instagram and I saw three people harmonizing um, Take It to the Limit, I believe. And they were killing it. And I was like, oh, what's going on with the Eagles? You know, the, you know, bass player just died. Glenn Fry died a while ago. What's going on? They're on, the, they're on their final tour. And I was reading about them. They're, what's weird about them is their first few albums did well, but not great. And then they put out a greatest hits album and it sold the most albums of anything ever. So like 38 million copies. I'm thinking, didn't Back in Black sell more than that? Maybe they meant of the 70s. I don't know. Um, but I'd like to go see them because I always loved Don Henley's voice and I also loved his drumming. Um, but they used to always be battling. They're sort of like uh, the American Oasis, except they're not brothers. <laughs> 
just always getting in fucking fights and shit. And the whole crowd's like, can you fucking assholes just get along and write some music? Like, what is the fucking problem? Who plays in a band who listens to this? Can I ask you a question? Like, what is the fucking problem? I, look, I get it in your 20s and shit like that. But once you get into your 30s, like your time is over. You don't realize it, but your time is over. You can put on sunglasses and fucking walk around looking like a giant mosquito like that one band did and change your sound and all of that shit. But really, you know, you had your fucking time and it's over, right? So then you you, you, you fucking, uh, what are you going to do? Go back and get a real job? Just put the fucking band back together. Talk out your shit. Go on the road and sing your fucking hit, right? Um, anyway, I, th- I think I, w- I would definitely go see them. I, I really like... Uh, I really like... Um, I really like Don Henley. Um, fuck, and he's also a guy from Dallas, too, and he liked the Cowboys. Remember that back in the day when I liked the Cowboys? Before Jimmy Johnson. I liked Tom Landry Cowboys. Um, anyway, there was one other thing I want to tell you about. Oh, did I talk to you about doing Springfield and Halifax? Oh, I didn't know. I talked about Halifax on Monday. I did. I talked about that and Springfield. All right. With that, let me do, let me do a read here. Such an asshole. I always do that. I always end up closing the fucking record thing. And then I got to splice two things together. I wasn't even trying to do that. All right. Here's a live read, everybody. A-G-I. Alpha Gulf uh, One. Our new partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Why take a bunch of different things when you can just mix one scoop of powder and water once a day? Or maybe in your loveless marriage and anything that takes a little bit longer and keeps you away from the other person. Maybe that's a reason. AGI was designed with ease in mind. (laughs) Yeah, read through the fucking... The subtext of that was designed with ease in mind. Even a mouth-breathing moron could stick this into a cup of liquid so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. I don't want to think. AG1 replaces... Your multivitamin. Jesus Christ, is there anything harder to swallow than a multivitamin? Are they, are they still like the size of a fucking, I don't know. What, what is this, a beetle? <laughs> probiotic. And more in one simple drink. Your multivitamin, your probiotic. Right? You got the vitamins for your body, the probiotic for your gut, which is also part of your body. See, this is why they make it simple. Because there's guys like me out there. All in one simple drinkable habit. Is that the right word there? Uh, AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. You already said that. Science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients. I guess I'm just supposed to read one of those. Let's get, let's, let's get to the meat of the order here. Every scoop is... Pa- I'm going to make one of those fucking quick edit videos with this thing. Me putting a scoop of it in. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. Are you probiotics? No, I'm pro-choice. And whole food source ingredients of high quality that gives you major benefits like gut and mood support. I might roofie my wife with some of this. Oh, jeez. Boosted energy and even healthier looking skin. Hair? What? What would you guys do if I started taking this thing and then all of a sudden the next time he came out to my show, I just had a full head, like a fucking lion's mane of red hair. And I had like some sort of chick apparatus in it. You know, you know the guys with the great hair? It's not, that they had, it's not enough that they have great hair. They got to put on like a, what is the thing like that keeps it out of your eyes? And it's like right behind you. Right behind your ears, you know, you, you put it on your forehead and then it flip, it goes back. What is that called? Um, one of those things. You know, if I had an hour to find out what that was on the Internet or else I had to spend the rest of my life in jail, that would be better than any Tom Cruise movie. Uh, hair and nails. AGI is raised 
is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of supply supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash burr. That's drinkag1.com slash burr and check it out. All right, that's it. That's the podcast. Have a great weekend, you cunts. And I'll talk to you on Monday. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's the Monday morning podcast from Monday, August 17th, 2015. Why did I just say 17th? Like, like something major happened. You know, on this day. On this day, 200 years ago, Christopher Columbus had jockish itch, which was fatal back in the 17th. How the fuck would he still be alive, Bill? He probably died of scurvy in the, see, 1492, we came over here and hacked off the, in, the fucking Native Americans' hands. You know? Probably had unprotected sex. Introduced some sort of, I don't know, I don't know what, genetal, genetic, genitalia scabies? Is that how you say it? I don't know, people. <laughs> this has got to be a record. How quickly did this 53 seconds in and it just went right off the fucking rails? This podcast is over! Fucking over. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I was talking about August 17th, just the way I said that, 17th, and I got all panicky. Like, why did I say it like something important happened? And then that fucking debacle happened. Anyways, what's going on? How are you? Um, it's the 17th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2015. This is the year of the uh, cockatoo, I believe, in the Chinese calendar. They have cockatoos over there? I don't know. I've, I, I've been to Hong Kong. I didn't see any. I was only there for a day. Um, anyways, so... Oh, Billy Fat Tits, the fucking pasty Avenger. I've been uh, I've been on a tear here. And as I told you last week, I fucked up my knee. My knee. I fucked the thing up. Uh, skipping rope. Tra-la-la. Right. And I guess my fucking leg muscles got all tight and it started yanking my old ass knee, you know, in the wrong direction. And I started like, you know, just hobbling out to the car, you know, tippy toeing down the street. You know, into the bathroom. I mean, take that old man piss in the middle of the night. Just wake up from a dream. You know, I mean, what you dream? What do you dream about at my age? No, going to a farmer's market. And they still have tomatoes left. Yeah, that's a dream to me. I wake up aroused when I have that dream. <laughs> it's a sad, it's a sad fucking case. But anyway, so I stretched out and did all that shit. But still, I, uh, I kind of fucked up on my diet a couple of days. Um, my uh, my wife, you know, was asking, hey, why don't we hang out and go do something? So we went to a museum and I fucking hate museums. I absolutely fucking hate. I've told you about this before. I hate museums with a fucking passion. I hate how quiet it is in there. I hate people standing reading that little card next to that fucking painting that I swear to God, it's like I did something like that when I was five. Gee, you know, can't somebody just go back to painting a cow in a field? You know what I mean? Does everything just have to be like just a smearing of cover, colors? All oh, what the fuck? These people are so dumb. They're sitting there staring at it, act, acting like they see something. What are you looking at? That's a light blue, that's a darker blue, and there's an even darker blue on that big square fucking canvas. I get it. He, he took different shades of blue. What does it say? It says nothing. It says the guy knows how to color in a fucking square. I knew how to do that. I had this guy a long time ago, he explained it to me. He goes, well, the difference is, because I'd be like, a little kid could fucking do that. And he goes, the difference is, is a little kid can't draw uh an amazing picture like these people that make these abstract things can't they, they're choosing they're choosing to to create that way it's like choosing to do what fucking draw like a five-year-old so like i i know how to talk like an adult sort of if i go on stage and start telling jokes like a five-year-old all of a sudden i'm i'm i should be in a museum telling my jokes 
Knock, knock. Come on, you're supposed to say who's there. I'm fucking standing in the corner. And all of a sudden, I'm, uh, I'm comedy's Picasso. I don't know, whatever. We went there, and she actually wanted to go see this short film um, that this guy made. I don't know who the fuck it is. I can't ever remember anybody's fucking name, but it, it was about L.A. and growing up in L.A. and uh, down in Compton and everything like that. And uh, I love anything that is not a messy fucking painting. And it's also like history of Los Angeles because there's so little history of it. They just fucking, like I said before in the park, they just pay right over the shit. You know, Robert Kennedy got assassinated down the fucking Ambassador Hotel. That thing would have been a shrine in any other city. This city fucking knocked it down, put up a school on top of it. You know what I mean? Somewhere in the cafeteria, there's like an X on the floor where the guy fucking bled out. I mean, it's unbelievable. They just don't give a fuck. Do you know they had one of the one of the biggest acts of fucking terrorism as far as blowing up a building and it collapsing happened here in L.A.? Before 9-11, the biggest one was when somebody blew up the fucking... Uh, the L.A. Times building, the original one. And I've been all over the Internet, and I've walked all over downtown L.A. I can't find a fucking plaque or, or information anyway. They just, all right, fuck it. They just <laughs> plowed it over with a couple of oxen, and then that's it. Now they just, you know, they got the fucking uh, the little white obelisk art deco thing looking. They're acting like that's the only place they ever were, like that the fucking thing get, didn't get blown up in the middle of the night. Um. So anyways, that's what the fuck am I talking about? That's all. So when we went there, this guy had all this uh, this footage, you know, from basically like the Rodney King era right up until now. Um, I love that shit. Seeing the old cars, you know, back to the early 90s when everybody wanted a fucking Nissan Maxima. Like that was the goddamn car, right? Um, I just, there's little details like that. And then seeing, you know, the beginnings of everybody fucking having an Impala lowrider. Now that's almost like hacky at this point. If you actually have an Impala low rider with the fucking wire rims, it's just like everybody's seen that. You know, it's like owning a Mustang or a 69 fucking Camaro. Everybody, you've seen a million of them. So um, anyway, so we went down, we watched that, and then uh, she took me to this place around the fucking corner, which was a German place that sold all these different kinds of like brats and sausages and... Uh, fucking sick ass french fries like your like your mom made remember those big thick fucking wedges and she just deep fry the shit out of them they had that i got some sort of rabbit and something else fucking brat sausage whatever the fuck you call it it was absolutely delicious i had two fucking french fries it was like a junkie sitting in a crack house, man. It was fucking brutal. And I looked over in the corner, and there was two young guys, right? And they're like, their fucking mid-20s, prime of their fucking life, can eat McDonald's at 2 in the morning and wake up with a flat stomach. They were over there. These two young fucking cunts were sitting over in the corner, and they had those giant German Oktoberfest beer steins. And I just sat there staring at those mugs of beer. They, they look, glanced over a couple of times. They're probably, what the fuck is this guy looking at? Like, I wanted to fight. It's like, I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking. I was like Homer Simpson, just sitting there doing the mmm, beer. And um, I actually asked the fucking waitress. I was just like, how many, how many ounces is that? How many beers? Is that two, two three beers? He was like two and a half. It's two and a half fucking beers. And I already fantasized about being off the wagon. This is why I'm always going to be a drunk. Because when I'm sober, I don't go, ooh, this is amazing. Falling asleep at 10 o'clock at night and waking up with energy. I don't think that. I just start thinking of how much I'm going to drink when I go back to drinking. And uh, I can't wait for the fucking king season to start. Because I'm going down to that fucking place. I'll probably take Joey Bartnick. You know, he's a Pittsburgh guy. God knows, you know, him a lawhead. God knows they grew up on sausages and brats. Might even uh, fucking go with the two of them, right? Go down there and get one of those fucking giant beers. I'll fucking drink two of those. <laughs> Become old fucking Macy Day bloated Billy again. Um, so I fucked up there. And then uh, last night um, I did a gig just outside of San Diego at the Harris Casino valley center or something like that really really like beautiful part of california like you come off of the five and there's all these little mom and pop stores i was making fun of it and shit but it, it just had like that vibe of like 
small town slash maybe a meth problem, you know, which is like, I guess that's what Maybury is nowadays, you know, probably heroin now, all that fucking problem going on. And, um, and when we did the gig, but, uh, I actually flew down in a helicopter to the gig. I, uh, rented an R44 and I brought, uh, the opener, Kevin Shea with me and I flew down with my instructor and, uh, and his brother. And, uh, dude, it was, it was the fucking shit. I probably lost money on the gig, but I don't give a fuck. It was cool as hell. We were actually going to land in the parking lot. They actually have like a little, uh, area that they use as a helipad. It's just this corner of the parking lot. We were going to land there, get out, do the gig. And then the end, get back in the fucking thing and take off. But the thing was, was it had all these mountains all around it. And the main street in had no lights and there was a lot of power lines and that type of shit so we were just like yay why don't we land at a fucking local local airport and drive in instead considering neither one of us has ever flown out of here you know and those are the fucking decisions you make if you want to fly safely um they actually had a mid-air collision down there i just saw this little ass airport i don't know how the fuck you don't see each other you're not talking on the fucking radio. I don't know, man. That's the kind of shit you just like, yeesh. You know, when you start thinking you know stuff, which is always dangerous in any fucking business, we start, hey, you know, I can fucking kind of keep this thing. One of the hardest things when you first fly is, is staying at a consistent altitude. What you're supposed to do in a helicopter is basically look at your manifold pressure gauge and how, whatever inches you're pulling. Uh, really sounds like I'm jerking off here, but... Uh, whatever the, it's it's measured in like inches of mercury so say if you if you're 21 and you look over at your uh your vs vertical speed indicator if it's at zero um you just then you just dial it in and you just keep it okay 21 inches is what i need to pull and i'll and keep the fucking uh goddamn cyclic at where i'm at but i always end up fucking it up and if i don't look at it for a couple minutes i i used to go up like 300 or down or descend 300 feet now I'm kind of within like 100 feet, so I kind of felt better about that. But uh, so anyway, so I flew down there, and then we drove like the, another 25 minutes, did the gig, had a great fucking time, great crowd, and uh, then we drove back to the airport and fucking flew back, man, and uh, flew back from just outside of San Diego. We got back in about 35 minutes, flying over all of this fucking traffic, and uh, just flew basically right along the coast the whole way up. And, um, it was cool to do that. I actually kind of, you know, he was teaching me sort of some instrument stuff where I'm not instrument rated. And of course that piqued my fucking interest now. So, uh, why the hell not? I might do that next. But, uh, as you're flying at night, like it's obviously way different during the day. And I was just like, I was just like, dude, I'm glad you're here. Cause I would be completely lost. I don't know where I am. And he just pointed up. He goes, see right there. He goes, that's the long beach pier. You can always tell the long beach, uh, wharfs. Well, I don't know what the fuck you call them. They're all fucking psychotically lit up. It's like the third biggest um, port, wharf, pier, whatever the fuck you call it, in the world, I guess. So it's always all lit up. And there's all kinds of fucking Xboxes and sex slaves and blood diamonds going in and out of there every fucking day. So it, it's always lit up. <laughs> and we ended up landing at uh, Long Beach after it was closed, which is pretty fucking cool. And they got this thing. I forget how many times you click it. But when we took off, the airport was already closed, so all the fucking lights were out and everything. And uh, on the cyclic, you just fucking click, you know, where you, basically if you're going to talk to the tower, you just click it like seven or nine times, I forget. And when you do that, all the lights come on. The whole fucking field lights up. It's the shit. So that's what I did last night, huh? Not too shabby. Uh, but anyways, and you know what? Kevin Shea was really fucking chill. I thought he was going to be freaking out that I was flying. He actually said I did a good job. And he, he actually he said this thing where he doesn't freak out when I'm taking off, when, when, when he's taking off or when he's up there. He says when, when, whenever the plane or whatever he's in goes to land, that's when he freaks out, which I thought was kind of interesting to just be afraid then. Um, anyways, I'm babbling here. Uh, so I was talking about, oh, yeah, so that night I fucking, you know, we had to leave like around 3.30, and flew down about four o'clock. So uh, that was right around dinner time. And then I got to a casino and I'm just like, they were like, we got Mexican food. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> you want tacos? Yes. 
How about a burrito? Okay. <laughs> Sounded like little John there. And I fucking, uh, you know, fucking just inhaled a chicken fucking burrito. It was, it was actually really good. I have it, I think, was because I haven't eaten like that since the 4th of July. I haven't had any just fucking food that's going to make you a fat fuck. So it was delicious. Uh, But everybody else there was also saying it was good. And then I I was in the back of my head going, dude, don't take it too far now. Don't take it too far. So then I reached for a taco and I only had one. And um, so anyways, I came back this morning. And I got on the scale after I took my dog around the block and then went on like an hour and a half fucking hike (laughs) and weighed myself with an empty stomach so I would actually make weight this week. I know the second I had a glass of water, I fucking went up like three pounds, but uh, I'm going to say I'm about 171 pounds. The scale read 168, 170, and 169.4, depending on where I put it. So... uh, I just took the middle one, 169.4, and then because I, I had, you know, hadn't eaten breakfast and I hadn't drank any water, I just added like fucking a couple, two, three pounds. So I'll say I'm 171. I might be a little under. I might be a little over. But there you go. Go fuck yourself, man. I've lost almost 17 pounds of fucking booze, burgers, ice cream, potato chips, and all of that fucking shit. And uh, I feel great. And uh, I can't wait to lose... The rest of this, whatever the fucking it's going to be, whenever I lose the last, I still can grab a nice fucking handful here, man. Whenever I lose the rest of this. And then the second I get a nice flat stomach, I'm going to get myself a gallon of ice cream and one of those beer steins, and I'm going to go right back up again. What is the point of losing all the weight if you're not going to go back and indulge and become a complete fat fuck again, right? I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you're doing it to have a lifestyle change. I'm just trying to just, you know. I don't want to be 40 pounds overweight, so I'll just fucking drop that the 20, and I'll go back to zero, and then I'll be 20 pounds overweight again, just in time for my special next year. Big fucking booze head coming at you. And I would never do that to you. Um, all right, let's get to, uh, is there any fucking advertising for this week? Jesus Christ, I've shit on so many of them. I don't, I don't know what is, what is left. Do I have anything? Oh, there we go. Oh, three. Three little ones. Remember back in the day I used to have six? <laughs> what happened? Oh, these people stick with me through thick and through thin. They don't give a fuck what I say. I love this company. These, these people are fucking cool. Here we go. Um, all right, let's talk about the local news, shall we? Uh, yeah, we got to check in our own our old friend there. You remember, remember what's his face? Rhett's his face. Rodney Dangerfield. Remember his doctor, Dr. Vinny Bumbats? He'd always be talking about him. Well, we here on the podcast like to talk about our old friend, old Anthony. Anthony Monsanto. See what that Goomba's up to this fucking, <laughs> this month. Do you know that those guys are over in uh, India right now? Monsanto, and they have like a sister company right now, and they're getting, a t- they're getting sued, I believe, or they're getting taken to court because India said, we don't want ge- genetically modified food. Can you believe that? They didn't want their food altered. <laughs> they probably looked at all the fucking poisoned people in this country, and they're like, well, we don't want to be like that. We already have a population problem. The last thing we need is these fucking assholes fucking with our curry, Right? Our chicken, our rice, our fucking eggplant, and all that bullshit, right? So what? What is? What does Anthony do? He's a cunt. He doesn't give a fuck. He goes in there anyways, and without permission, allegedly takes a strain of their own eggplant and genetically fucking modifies the thing. And guess what? They got fucking busted. So now it's a big thing whether they're going to go to trial, if people are going to go to jail, and all that. And you know what Anthony's doing? He's just throwing money around over there because he's going to find some corrupt fucking politician who's going to say, fuck this. I'd rather have a big house and fuck over a billion of my own countrymen just so I can have a fucking jacuzzi and a couple of goddamn whores come over there. Can you believe that? Um, Scotland actually outlawed genetically altered food. Uh, I wish this country would. It's fucking unbelievable. I'll tell you one thing right now, because I'm not a well-read guy, but I can, I, can, I can predict shit. I can guarantee you that nobody who has any fucking remote shot of becoming president 
basically I mean a candidate in the Democratic or the Republican Party. Nobody is going to bring up old Anthony. They're not going to fucking do it. They're not going to bring up how all these cunts throw all these mon- all this money at all these fucking politicians so that they can use words like organic, homegrown, and all of that shit legally when it isn't. And it's just a bunch of fucking poison. You know what I mean? I think it's fucked up, dude. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that's really fucked up. So I want to keep an eye on that, man, because I went over there to India, obviously, and I, I, as I talked about before, I did a gig, and the fucking people are cool as shit. They're funny as hell. And um, I don't, I can't explain it. I went over there and just, I can't explain it the way the fucking people couldn't explain how great the underwear was or the shaving cream, whatever the fuck it was. I know. I just felt, uh, I just liked it over there. Um, so I like the people and I hope that their food doesn't become fucked up like the food is over here. And as dumb as I am, I am speaking from experience because as I told you guys, I ate and drank like fucking Ernest Hemingway. When I was over in France earlier this year for 10 days and I put on only four fucking pounds, I was crushing beers, rich fucking meals. I was eating fucking homemade cream puffs every day and I came home and all I gained was four pounds. If I did that shit in this country, I would have fucking gained 15, 17 fucking pounds. Um, telling you man this i don't know there's something going on believe me i don't believe me i don't give a fuck i'm just throwing it out there and uh so anyway if you guys have any good stories about all our good friend there anthony we'll see uh, anthony monsanto we'll see uh you know we'll try to just keep an eye on him see what he's <laughs> see what the fuck he's been up to Anthony. um all right so as i mentioned this time of year i actually start to pay attention to baseball because i fucking love october baseball you know, they, they fucking uh, put all the extra mics in there and the crowds sound amazing. It's cold, you know, the trophies on the line, fucking legendary shit happens. I can't wait, you know, so we're coming out of the dog days of summer here. So I'm starting to pay attention. So for those of you not paying attention, my fucking Red Sox, I have not, I've watched one game this year. They're 52 and 65, a point four four winning percentage. They had 12 and a half games out. And they've played 117 games. What do they play? 162. So they got about 40 fucking five games left. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. If we won all 45, we could only win. There's no way we can win 100 games this year. We need to go about 40 and five. I think we got a shot at winning the the, uh, division. Actually, no. The fucking Yankees are 64 and 52. We're not going to catch them, but... 12 and a half games out. Yeah, I'd say this is a wrap. Toronto's a half game out. Loving that. I hope they keep plummeting. I love Baltimore and I love fucking Tampa Bay. I like those. I don't like, I don't like Toronto. They, they, they don't even belong in the fucking league. What are you doing here? You know, get your own sport. You don't see us playing your sport, do, we? do you? <laughs> fucking Red Sox lost again today. Lost again today. 10 to 8. Put up eight runs and still couldn't fucking hold them off. Um, all right, let's get to the standings here. How's Kansas City doing? Kansas City, first fucking place, best record in the fucking American League. I love it. We went five and five our last ten. Yankees went four and six. Toronto went eight, eight and two. They're surging. Kansas City, seven and three. That's fucking tremendous. Detroit's four and a half back. Minnesota's one and a half back. You got yourself a race there. When the fuck did the Astros go to the American League? What the fuck happened there? Who switched? Milwaukee did a long time ago. All right, that's fucking weird. Washington, Atlanta, Miami, Philly, St. Louis. I don't got time to figure this fucking shit out. All right, so Kansas City's my team. Love to see Kansas City. I'm liking the Mets. They're long, tortured fucking fans, even though they're New Yorkers. I don't give a fuck. Philadelphia. Jesus Christ, what happened in Philly? St. Louis is always fucking there. Oh, God, they're going to make a run again. Jesus Christ, St. Louis is there. They're fucking, what, a, what, a, what a fucking, what an organization. I'm sorry, this is boring as shit. You just listen to me looking at the goddamn stats here. Um... All right, here's something fucked up. You guys see that story on Patrick Kane? I shouldn't even set his fucking name. 
That Patrick Kane story where he's uh, getting, he's charged with allegedly, uh, what the hell is it here? Let's make sure I get this right. Um, oh, for God's sakes, where the fuck is it? Basically, he's charged with allegedly raping somebody. So some douchebag is, is saying that the NHL needs to suspend him. It's like th- th- that right there is the reason why not only should the victim be protected, the, the person being accused should be protected. You shouldn't put the guy's name and face and drag him through the fucking mud. You know, am I the only guy who remembers that Rolling Stone story? And that's not the only time that that has happened. All right. So in fairness, considering what this guy has to lose, he should be treated with the same respect as the alleged victim because it's all alleged. You shouldn't be fucking. This is it's none of my fucking business right now. You know what I mean? Let it go to trial. Have the whole thing come out in the fucking wash. And in the end, if he's found guilty, then not only suspend him, you got you can't have a fucking convicted rapist in you. That's the end of his career. Ugh. That's the <laughs> My voice just cracked it. That's the end of his fucking career. I'm not trying to uh, attack either person here. I'm just saying in the future, they, they really need to start fucking doing this because Let's just play devil's advocate the way this blogger is, is fucking talking about Patrick Kane like he's already been convicted. And just sitting there, how we hold our athletes and fucking blah, 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 blah. And we just can't wrap our heads around that condescending fucking speak. You know, like I'm sitting there with a poster of him on my fucking wall in a racing car bed. Um, gee, do people in power take advantage of it? Wow. What else do you know there, fucking no-name blogger? Um Anyways, I think, that, you know, that they shouldn't put the, they also should protect the accused because this guy has so much to fucking lose. And the bottom line is once you get accused of that shit, it's fucking over. Even if they find out, even if the victim were to come out and just say, hey, I made the whole thing up. I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry about that. Fucking see you. Right. And of course, you can say that as a woman and not go to fucking jail after you just ruined a guy's life. Um, sorry, I was just in a mood, you know, then I went out and I got some breakfast and I felt better and I realized, you know what? He didn't rate me actually. Uh, I kind of enjoyed it. (laughs) So anyways, that's what I'm saying. You shouldn't say either person's name. And then, you know, when it goes to trial, if the person's convicted, then tar and feather them. I, I think that's more than fair. Don't you? I don't know. So anyways, so let me, so here's the thing. If Patrick Kane is acquitted of this, if it doesn't go to trial, don't be a fucking cunt and yell some shit at him at games when, you know, when your team's playing them because you're mad you can't beat the fucking Blackhawks. Cause don't be a douche. All right. But like I said, if he fucking did it, you know, he should go to jail and uh, rot there. Right. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Let's fucking move on here. Uh, what do we, what else do I got? How, how many, much fucking time? 35 minutes. Okay. Um, what else did I want to talk about? I think that was basically it. Um, I got anything else? Do I got anything coming up? I don't. I'm just still fucking, uh, editing, um, editing this F is for family. Uh, I got to go back in tomorrow and all that type of shit. I can't wait for you guys to see this shit. I can't wait. I believe I got to wait until December to find out if you guys think it's good or it sucks. But uh, anyways. Oh, you know what I should do? You guys mind if I read you some of my fucking dates here? I got coming up. I got to hype these fucking things. I just added a whole run through Texas. Um, Where the hell is it? There we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. BillBird.com, everybody. Oh, BillBird.com. All right. September 11th in Los Angeles, I'm doing the Jack Radio Comedy Show. September 21st, I'm in Austin, Texas. September 23rd, I'm in Houston, Texas. September 25th, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And on the 24th, I believe that's a Saturday, I'm going to the uh, Texas Longhorn OSU game. So I'll see you out in the parking lot. Hit me up, man. If you're fucking smoking some meat or whatever, let me know. Let me stand by your smoker like some stray cat. You know, 
I'll throw 20 bucks towards your tailgate or 40 bucks, whatever you need. Let us buy in. Me and Verzi are coming through town. Let us buy in. All right? But don't, call, don't fucking reach out to me if you got some bullshit here. This is Texas. I would accept bullshit in some other fucking state, but this is Texas. You guys are known for this shit. Um, we'd love to come by. We'll bring some fucking top shelf booze. We're going to be rooting for the Longhorns. We'll have a good fucking time. All right. And then in the end of October, um, October 22nd, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, at the Heinz Hall for the Performing Arts. October 23rd, I'm going to be at Play, Playhouse Square State Theater in Cleveland, Ohio. October 24th, ah, I'm going to Indianapolis, Indiana. Jim Irsay country. Uh, I'll make sure I have enough air in the fucking microphone uh, playing the Merce Theater. October 25th, I'm in Detroit at the Fox Theater. Uh, the 26th, I'm going to be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 28th, Minneapolis, Minnesota. 29th, the Chicago Theater. Um, and then if, on November 6th, I'm going to be in Philly. Haven't been there in a long fucking time. Usually play the Tower Theater. Uh, I'm going to be playing another Wells Fargo Center this time. So uh, I got a brand new hour of shit. I'm going to be fucking doing a bunch of stand-up between now and then. So I give you guys your money's worth. So uh, please, by all means, come on out to the shows. I would appreciate it. All right. And with that, let's get back to the – let's get to your questions this week. I think I've run my mouth enough about myself and what I've been up to and the things that I find important. <laughs> um, all right. Fat shaming success story. All right. Oh, it was a rough one, you know. All right. Hey, Bill, I'm six feet tall, and five months ago I weighed 320 pounds. Big boy. Jesus, buddy. All right. I'm now down to 243 and trying to get around – Trying to get down to around 200. I've been using your self-shaming method, and it's, it's obvious that it works. I fucking love that self-shaming wins. You getting in there, huh? You taking your shirt off, standing in the mirror, jumping up and down. Look what you did. Look at it. And then you fucking build yourself up. Turn it around. He said, even though my people tell me I look good, I don't let up on myself. Thanks for the motivation and go fuck yourself. Yeah, man, you got to do it. You got to stay on yourself. And this is the thing, too. I look, this is a psychologically how I look at it. I look at it like uh, each, each week is a game, like in the NFL season. All right? I, I get on the scale. I figure out how much fucking weight I need to lose. All right? I needed to lose like a good fucking, you know, I was a good, ooh, oh, Jesus. You know, my fighting weight's, you know, when I had a, last time I had a flat stomach, I was between like 162 and 165. So I was up to 187. So I needed to lose a good 20, 25 pounds. All right? So I figured, you know, I'll lose two to three a fucking week. I'm looking at a good 10 weeks, 10, 10 weeks season here. So what I do is if I lose, I have it on the, on the calendar. I write the weight that I'm at. And every Sunday, I just write down the weight that I want to be the next Sunday. And uh, I weigh myself every day. Sometimes a couple of times a day, I get fucking psychotic with it. And um, I try to make weight every Sunday. And I, try, and I try to do it without starving myself because then you just kind of eat away at muscle and you become very fleshy, very fleshy, um, which is you're just all gelatinous and shit. You want the muscle because I guess it eats the fat because that's what somebody in a bar who wasn't a fucking nutritionist told me. All right. So and then how I, well, how I do it so I don't fuck up. Is because I know that there's no way I'm going to go 10 fucking straight weeks and eat absolutely perfectly. I know at some point I'm going to fuck up and have a burrito and a taco and a fucking brat or whatever the fuck I did. Um, and I just try to immediately get back on the stick. And then that week, if I don't make weight, I just I call that week a loss. And then I just look at my record. I just pretend I'm a coach. All right. I was two and oh, now I'm two and one. I can't go two and two. Can't go two and two. Then the local fucking sport writers are going to get, yeah, is it time to make a change? You know? So uh, I won the first two weeks with this diet. I lost the next one. I tried to call it a bye week, but I'll say that's a loss. So I was two and one. Then I won the next two weeks in a row. And this week I was looking at a loss. So instead of being five and one, I was looking at four and two. And I didn't like that number. And I just went really hardcore with the working out and trying to eat as perfect as I could. So I, I just, just look at it that way. And if you, uh, you know, if you fuck up or whatever, it's not the end of the world unless you allow it to be. And I think a lot of people, myself included, is when you, when you fuck up on your diet, 
the next day, what you have to watch out is when you eat a bunch of grease or sugar or salt, you're going to wake up the next day and you're going to crave that shit. Um, so what you've basically started is a little fire that you can easily stomp out with your fucking slippers while you're still in your bathrobe by just making a, yourself a bowl of oatmeal um, or something healthy for breakfast. And then you eat that, you, you're, because you've been eating so well, you're going to want to, you're going to still be on that craven, uh, healthy stuff. This is how it works for me. Okay. Obviously I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not, none of this, no sports medicine, nothing. This is just what's working for me. I've, I've realized after years, I think it was stupid when people said food is a drug. I realize finally now that it is. So when I fuck up, you know, and I basically in a food version, you hit the crack pipe. I just make sure the next day that when I get up, like, before I even, like, I, I, you know, I go for a walk, I drink some water with some lemon, and that will really calm you down, you know, so you don't get a fucking Danish or go out and get some waffles or some salty fucking eggs and cheese and bacon and all that shit. Um, that's what's been working for me. So if you want to go from 243 to 200, uh, just maybe, you know, try that. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, I'm sure there's a zillion other things on the internet by you know, professionals, but, uh, I'm happy for you, man. That's fucking insane, dude. That's what three twenty to that's almost 80 fucking pounds, 77 pounds, dude. That's unbelievable. Good for you, man. Keep going. All right. Drought shaming. Oh God. Hey, Bill up here in Northern California, we are on tight water restriction. Pretty much everyone's lawns are dead or mostly Brown. Personally, it's driving me up the wall to have a dead ass yard But, you know, I'm going to do my part. My issue is these selfish cunts who have the fucking nerve to just flood their goddamn lawns like they're special or something. I want to drought shame uh, the blatant water users in my neighborhood, but I don't want to shit where I eat. Do you have any thoughts or advice? By the way, we saw your show uh, when you came to Sacramento and you killed, man. We hope you come back soon. Oh, thank you. Um, Well, look, I never advocate ratting somebody out. Um, but it's a weird thing when, when somebody's doing something that affects the whole tribe, you know what I mean? This isn't like, uh, you know, the guy drove home. I don't know. And uh, whatever. I'm trying, I can't think of a fucking example. This is something that really is affecting the entire state. Um, I, I don't know what I would do. Why don't you, you leave him an anonymous note and just say, listen, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but we are in a drought. Um, you're not supposed to be watering your lawn and I'm not the kind of person to rat somebody out. That's what you do. And I would really hope that you don't put me in a position to have to call the local authorities about you watering the shit out of your fucking lawn. So then basically what you did is you went passive aggressive. You didn't rat them out. You basically, listen, dude, don't, don't make me fucking do this. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, we're, we're in, we're in serious fucking trouble here. So that whole no snitching thing, it's, it becomes a little bit of a gray area. So why don't you give the guy a fucking chance? You know? Don't be a cunt in the letter. Just say, please, I, I don't rat people out, but, you know, this is the needs of the state and the people in the state are way bigger than you and your yard. Please don't put me in a position. You got to go walking, like in true romance. When he fucking clasped his hand together, like whatever he said, I beg you, don't put me in this position or something, whatever the fuck he said. That, that's what I would do. So then you don't have to fucking rat him out. Then if, you know, he keeps watering his yawn, lawn, I don't know, what do you do? You know what you do? You pussy out and you have your wife make the call. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I really have zero tolerance when it comes to people, uh, I don't know. I, but, but look at me. I flew a fucking helicopter down to my fucking gig. And I'm not using bottled water. But this is, my instructor was saying, like, dude, we just fucking sent leaded gas through the atmosphere. So, I mean, I'm a fucking hypocrite, too. I don't know what to tell you, but it does bug me when everybody else is trying to tighten the fucking belt. And there is that person just fucking water in the shit. I'll tell you, the people in my neighborhood, man, they're fucking watering the shit out of there. I, I, don't, the thing, I don't even have any grass. In my fucking yard. You know what I mean? I got a couple of... I water the... Uh, I water the plants that are actually producing food. 
my wife likes all these other fucking plants. I was like, who gives a fuck about a plant? If it's not feed me, what the fuck do I care about it? Let's get them out of here, right? So that's a bit of a fight. But like some of my neighbors, man, it's like they water their shit. And uh, what kills me is not that they're necessarily watering it. It's that their sprinklers are so fucked up. It's just shooting out into the street, landing on the, the hot tar and then just evaporating. Um. What they're really doing is spraying people's cars that probably just got them washed, which you're not supposed to. I haven't washed my car in fucking months. Look, dude, we're all fucking trying. Maybe that guy with the green lawn, maybe he's doing something else. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, look at me. I mean, I fucking, I fly around in helicopters. Who the fuck am I to say that? (laughs) Um, All right, here we go. Is Phil Collins a good drummer, Bill? Bill, insert generic redhead insult here. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, what do you think about Phil Collins as a drummer? His drummer was a, his drumming was a staple of the '80s, but he never shows up on any greatest drummers list. Uh, as a drum enthusiast yourself, can you explain why? Is he not a great drummer? As an average music listener, but not a drum expert, I think he he drums like an awesome motherfucker. But I know fuck all about the technicalities of drumming, except uh, what you share. Is Phil Collins great or even good? Please help. Phil Collins is a fucking monster. He's an unbelievable fucking drummer. And he has his own sound. And what I love is the time when he came up, there was this fad of having no bottom head on your toms, which are basically the, the, you know, you have your bass drum, your snare drums, and then like, you know, Basically, you know, someone does a fill, da 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 those fucking things. Those are your tom-toms, right? So there was a time where having no bottom head, for whatever fucking reason, um, they were called concert toms. There was people that just liked that sound. Like, they went through this whole studio uh, time in the studio, I think, where they were really deadening the sound. Like, drums were really had a dead sound, and maybe that's why they did it. I don't know. I'm getting in over my head very quickly here. But, um... He came up, you know, when he, I, I go all the way back to the, the, when he was just playing drums in Genesis and Peter Gabriel was still in it and they were that whole prog rock band. Um, I think even back then he, he didn't have any bottom heads and he, he has his own sound and he's fucking left-handed and he's an absolute fucking monster. And um, in the air tonight, that fucking drum fill, that's one of those things that, you know, I guess if you play drums for three months, you could mimic it, but could you come up with it? Um, so why doesn't he get credit? Well, I would say because he played when, when he played drums in Genesis, they were a progressive rock band. And I think it was, I don't know. It was just too fucking avant-garde. It wasn't pop. So, um, he didn't quite get the credit. And then when the eighties came around, he kind of became, he became the front man. He became the singer and he'd go back. There was a Chester Thompson and they'd have like a, they'd play drums together, maybe do a little drum battle or something like that. But then it was considered, Oh wow. Look, he can, there was a lot of people even by the eighties were like, Oh, he can play drums too. They didn't know that he like started off as a drummer. He's one of those amazing guys that like, you know, is it like Dave Grohl where he's in fucking Nirvana and your lead singer dies. I mean, you're usually fucked as a drummer. That guy, stepped out to the forefront and started his own band has become a front man in his own right. And I always talk about that. And I never thought to think that Phil Collins did the same thing. Uh, Peter Gabriel left and he just went out right to the front. Um, Don Henley is another guy, but he always sang when he was with the Eagles. But anyways, why doesn't he get the credit? I think because of songs like Susudio and he was completely overexposed in the 80s and he made really schlocky pop music he went from being this underground outsider guy to just writing the crosshairs and being the most successful guy of an age and then you you just get branded like you're an 80s guy and then the next decade comes and everybody the, the youth from that immediately revolts against whatever happened the previous fucking decade and then the decade before is considered cool like in the 80s everybody was about 60 the 60s and the wood woodstock was great everybody hated fucking disco the 90s came around they were like fuck hair metal and all that stupid ass fucking shit and then all of a sudden the 70s became cool and the bgs were somehow being played again and fucking uh dirk diggler boogie nights all of that shit dazed and confused all those fucking movies came out 
right? In the 80s, you had like fucking platoon and all that shit talking about the Vietnam War and fucking Woodstock and hippies and all of that fucking crap. 70s, what'd you have? You had happy days, right? Bill, we fucking get it. All right. So I think, but when you're like uh, the face of an era, like people won't let you change. And they, they, um, I don't think in the 70s when he was playing drums that they were popular, popular enough that people understand how great a fucking drummer he is. And, um, and then by the 80s, he was just singing that cheesy shit that I absolutely fucking hate. But DeRosa loves it. And he's like 10 years younger than me. So I don't know. But I will say he played with the, he so many fucking great tracks he played on. He played on Robert Plant's uh, I'm in the Mood, that that first solo album he did after uh, Zeppelin uh, had to break up because Bonham died. I believe it was his first solo album. Just fucking amazing drums for like a pop song. And just his phrasing, just the way he chooses, I, I don't know, just his... The way he expresses himself. I, I, th- I think he's a fucking monster. And he gets extra cool credit notes because he's a lefty. Um, I, last I read about him, he really fucked up his back, as a lot of drummers did from his era, because they knew nothing about stretching and yoga and that type of shit. And especially if you sang and, you, and they used to have like those mics, so you'd be playing and you'd, have, you'd be turning your neck. I know Don Henley fucked up his neck doing that. Um, a lot of drummers that sang back then. In fact, if you look at a lot of older drummers, they go from having a drum throne to having like that, a back, like a, literally like a regular chair, you know, support their back. And, um, but anyways, I'm fucking rambling here. He, he, he's a fucking monster, absolute fucking monster. So, uh, but what I've heard recently, he started playing again. So maybe he fixed his back but uh i read a real depressing article about him a few years ago in rolling stone where he was like retired from drumming and he was confused as to why he was called the antichrist you know because of his shit from the 80s and stuff and uh i don't know i felt bad for the guy so i was psyched when i heard he was drumming again so and if i get a chance i'm definitely going to go see him and i'll sit through all that susudio horse shit just to hear him play drums all right a fucked up cheating story need advice dear uh dear bill All right, I could really use uh, advice on this. I found out accidentally that my best friend since birth's girlfriend has been fucking our other best friend behind his back for over a year now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me back up here. I found out that my best friend's, my best friend since birth's girlfriend. All right, so your buddy since you were a toddler, he has a girlfriend. She's been fucking your other best friend behind his back for over a year now. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. Here we go. I was checking something on his phone and stumbled across naked pictures she had sent him. Shocked to see it, I dug further. Wait a fucking minute. The fuck are you doing with his phone? What were you checking on his phone? Wait a minute. What What the fuck? This, this, is, this whole fucking thing is weird. Are you the guy that's actually fucking your best friend's girlfriend and you're speaking about yourself in the third person? This whole thing is weird. I was checking something on his phone. I've never checked anything on any of my friend's phones ever. You know, if they hand it to me, I look at whatever picture is there. I don't start swiping around and snooping. You were snooping. What kind of a fucking man? Ah, Jesus Christ. All right, so you're snooping on this guy's phone. You stumbled across naked pictures. What do you mean you stumbled across? You kicked on the, you clicked on the photo app. And you scrolled through his photos. She had sent them. And then what? You sent them to your phone and jerked off to it later? <laughs> I'm probably being too hard on you. All right, shocked to see it, I dug further and read the text between them. Oh, Jesus, you were just fanning yourself, weren't you? Um, I love how you're just not, not fucking doing anything wrong either. The next thing you know, I was, I couldn't believe it. So now I'm looking at his tax record and his fucking social security number. Uh, anyways, all right. Shocked to see them. I dug further and read the text between them saying how much she loves him. And she wished they could fuck all day. And it made me so sick to my stomach that I went into his tax records. Um, sorry. She's the nicest girl I ever met in my life, and I look at her as a sister, but now I see how bad she's been 
fucking a kid over that's like my brother with his best friend, and I have no idea what to do. He trusts them both so much that he had no problem with them going alone together to Green Bay for a football game. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. They probably fucked on one top of one of those cheesehead things. You know, she bent herself over it, you know. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, now when I hang out with them from here on out, how could I act normal when I know what's going on? It would destroy my buddy if I told him. If I tell him, not only would I lose the friend I have. Wait, if I tell him, not only would I lose the friends I have, but this girl, if this is a girl he lives with, would do anything, would do anything for and is going to get engaged to her eventually. The four of us are like family, family, so I'm stuck in a fucked up position. Could use your help here. Should I tell him or let it play out? No. What kind of a fucking friend are you? They're going to get married? Maddie, jeez. No, you can't let that happen. This is what you got to do. You got to go out with the other two, the, the two dirty ones that are fucking around. You got to sit down and just say, listen, I was snooping on your phone. I shouldn't have fucking done it. And I saw the pictures. I know what's going on with the two of you. All right. So can you guys please tell him before I have to? And you have to tell him. You can't just break it off. You have to fucking tell them because you're not going to break it off. You're going to break it off and you're going to start fucking again or you, lady, are going to go fuck somebody else because you don't love this guy. Just go tell him and break up with them and get on with your life. All right? And just say, I'm not judging either one of you, but, you know, what the fuck do you want from me? And you had to know that if you are going to do something like this, eventually this was gonna, something like this was going to happen. So there you go. Good luck with that, guys. I'll be over here eating a cheeseburger. And you just fucking remove yourself from it. All right? And just to end, and I would say, listen, man, you have, you have until the end of the fucking weekend to tell him or I'm going to sit him down and tell him. All right? That's it. I, I didn't create this fucking situation. Uh, the situation is what the fuck it is because of your dick and your pussy. Uh, maybe not in that order. Maybe in that order. What are you going to do? And I would just fucking walk away. And, uh, you know, and I, and I wouldn't judge either one. You guys sound like you're young. I have no idea. God knows I made plenty of fucking mistakes in my life in that area. So I, what, what the fuck are you going to do? Okay, they fucked up. They fucked up. And they just got to come clean and uh, you let the shit fall where it may. I think, what's his face? Jim Croce's got a bunch of songs that your buddy could listen to. You know? She's living in L.A. with my best old friend best friend Ray a guy that she knew that she said she knew well and sometimes hated isn't that the way that's what you should do you should be singing that in the background when they confess isn't that the way they say it goes but let's forget all that and give me the number if you can't find it so I can call just to tell him I'm fine and to show I overcome the blow. I learned to take it well. I only wish my words could just convince myself that it just wasn't real. But that's not the way it feels. Oh, Jesus Christ, Bill. You're singing the whole fucking song. Um, that's Jim Croce Operator, by the way. Another sad song. Another sad song by Jim Croce. Uh, my, okay, here's another one for you. Here, My wife and I are two months away from the birth of our first child. That's fucking awesome. Congratulations. I want to hear your opinion on one of the names we have been favoring. First name, Birdie. Fuck you. You're not naming a kid Birdie. You're full of shit. Eh, I, don't, I don't buy this. I don't buy this at all. First name, Birdie. M- middle name, Ula. U-L-L-A. Short for my grandmother, Ursula. Last name starts with a G. Her initials would be B-U-G, Bug. Is this too weird of a name? Oh, you fucking hipster cunt. No, it isn't. Go ahead and name your fucking baby Birdie. You fucking dope. I imagine the DMV calling her name or a teacher calling her name in roll call. What do you think? You know what I think. You don't name a kid Birdie. Why would you do... I don't understand people who got the... Sh- did you never get the shit kicked out of you for no fucking reason? When you were in school? 
You're literally giving people a reason every fucking day to fuck with your kid. Why would you do that? Give her a pretty name. Birdie? You know, I, you know, why God gives someone like you sperm that works? It's just, it's just, I don't understand it. I mean, you know, was I too harsh this week on people? Is Birdie, is that like, a, you know what? I got to look that up right now. I got to look that fucking thing up right now. You got to be fucking shitting me. There's no way. Is, is that going to be like the new, like, Kathy? Birdie, the name that's sweeping the nation. Birdie, uh, that's that's a golfing term. That's what you hit in badminton. Birdie, girl, girl name. Okay, let's see the history of this. Birdie, meaning of the name. Well, I remember that was Lady Bird Johnson. Birdie was until recently a middle-aged ladies' club. What? Birdie was until recently a middle-aged ladies' club member wearing a bird-decorated hat, but now it's just kind of a vintage nickname. Think Haiti. Is that supposed to be Lucy? Josie. Oh, Josie. (laughs) Eyes are going. Mammy Millie. That's coming back into style in a big way. Actress Busy Phillips named her baby Birdie, inspired by First Lady Lady Bird Johnson as did soap star Maura West. In an earlier heyday of nicknames, uh, the 1880s, Birdie was a top 200 name. People who also like Birdie also like Alabama, Alfie, Alfred, Aspen, Blanche, Sicily, Clover, Dixie, Franklin, Hawk. Who fuck names a kid Hawk? Lenora, Oswald, Oswin. First of all, if, if celebrities are naming their baby that, it's a good fucking, that, that's a good one to avoid. Oh my God, look at these fucking names. Sparrow, Remy, Ransom. The fuck names a kid Ransom? Vesper, Win, W I N. Win! Win, God damn it! Zira. Toulouse. T-O-U-L-O-U-S-E. Toulouse. I looked at that and with my fucking dyslexia, I just saw a tool shed. Patience. Who named the fucking kid Patience? The fucking irony that I just flipped out about that. Dixie. Wait, why don't you just call her truck stop whore? Frank. There's a normal one. Franklin. That's all right. Gertrude. Jesus Christ. What's she banging someone in the fucking Gestapo? Gretel. Cosmo. Guthrie. Lottie. Maple. Marilla. Dude, these are fucking, these are fucking white people douchebag fucking names. Oh, my God. These, These are Mortimer. India, Heron, Heron, that's like how black people say heroin, Heron, he's on that Heron, you gonna name a fucking, <laughs> you can name a kid a drug, a slang for a drug, these, these, these fucking names are horrible, wait a minute, let me get to popularity, okay, these are the popular names, I gotta keep going with this podcast, this is fuck, Birdie is number 469 on Nameberry, what the fuck is Nameberry? All right, it reached its peak, this is like Casey Kasem, the, the name Birdie reached its peak in 1880, at two, ranked at 210, <laughs> And then by the 40s, wait a minute, it, it, it dropped all the way down to the fucking thousand where it belonged. Enter a different name. All right, let's enter a, let me, what's the worst fucking name I can think of? What's a fucking douchey name a hip, hipster would not, would name their kid? I'm going to go with Lampy. <laughs> Just looked over and saw a lamp. Let's see if that's one. No, no, Lampy is open if you want to be fucking original. 
How about fridge? F-R-I-D-G-E. It's something a fucking st- stupid white person would name their kid. Uh, we found 21 results. There's no way anybody's naming their kid fridge. I bet milty. How about milt? Milt. Popularity is 1,000% this week. Did I already see, see milt? I'm just going to think of some of the... Some of the fucking old singers back in the day. It was Engelberg Humperdinck. How about uh, Ebenezer? I can't spell this. Is there a Z in there? Just for the record, I'm spelling it E-B-I-N. E-A-Z-E-R. No fucking results for that. I'll go fuck yourself. All right, I got. I got to have one fucking name that comes out here. Come on, Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Oh, that's how you spell it. Are you guys still listening to this? Boy name, Ebenezer. Boy name. All right, meaning of Ebenezer. Ebenezer is a name of a biblical place. The stone set up by Samuel to mark his victory over the Philistines. Rather than a person, it was adopted by the British Puritans as the first name, and then exported to America, where it had some early popularity, entering the top one thousand in the eighteen eighties. Geez, I tell you, eighteen eighties was a rough time to be born. Not only fucking the scurvy and all that fucking horseshit. You had fucking names like Ebenezer and Bertie. Ugh, you can just feel their itchy clothes with those fucking names, can't you? Um, All right, I can babble with this shit forever. All right, that's the podcast for this week, everybody. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, Have a great week, and don't name your kid Birdie.